Well, um, I, I, what's the difference between a heresy and a false teaching? Um, I think in the Bible, uh, actually heresy and false teaching are, are held together. And, and I think the false teachers, the heretics, are the ones who are teaching doctrines that are incompatible with the gospel and they, dis they undermine the gospel. So for example, those who deny the resurrection would be false teachers uh, in Paul's view and therefore they'd be deeply damaging to the life of the church. Uh, those who would say that it's forbidden to marry would be false teachers and they would be damaging to the life of the church. Those who would say that sexual immorality is permissible and you can do anything would be false teachers and they'd be damaging to the church. So there's a, there's a category um, in the New Testament letters of false teachers and they're generally those who deny key truths about Jesus or they deny justification by faith or they deny biblical sexual morality. And Paul says that, that they are um, dangerous because they will lead people astray from salvation and they will destroy the life of the church. But Paul also recognizes that there are some areas of Christian teaching where people might teach things that are wrong, but they're not damaging in the same way. So the classic example for that would be different opinions over the food that you can eat. So one of the issues in the early church was whether or not you could eat everything or whether you had to observe the Jewish food laws. So, for example, in Romans 14 and 15 and 1 Corinthians, there are issues over what food can be eaten. And there are some people in the church who, uh, in conscience, were teaching you should only eat kosher food, that you had to live by the Jewish food laws. Now, Paul thought they were wrong, but he didn't treat them as false teachers unless they were telling other people that they had to live in that way for their salvation. If, um, if they were teaching that you had to live by the Jewish food laws or you had to be circumcised in order to be saved, then they were false teachers because they were undermining justification by faith. But if they were teaching uh, that it pleases God to um, eat kosher food and it might be better to eat kosher food, though not required, Paul would see that as a wrong teaching but it wasn't a false teaching in quite the same way. So in that case, Paul would rather want to engage with them and encourage them to um, understand the full freedom that's available in the gospel. So Paul draws a distinction on that issue of food between those who are wrong, but their wrong teaching is not undermining of the gospel and of salvation, and those who become false teachers. Now that can be quite a fine line to discern but uh, it's too easy for Christians to describe every kind of teaching as false teaching. So, for example, Christians might have different views on creation. They might have different views on charismatic gifts. They might have different views on eschatology and how and when the Lord Jesus is going to return. Um, they might have different views on what holiness means in, in a particular context. Um, and it's all too easy for people who hold a strong view to assume everybody else is a false teacher if they don't hold the same view. But they may be a wrong teacher. They may well not have properly understood what the Bible teaches, but that's not quite the same as being a false teacher who's denying the gospel. So sometimes Christians have divided from each other and have condemned each other um, simply for teaching that might, not be, might be mistaken, but it's not false teaching and heresy in the most serious uh, way. So if we want to deal with these issues of uh, who's drifting from evangelicalism, we have to be careful to differentiate between what is genuinely false teaching that is heretical and will deprive people of salvation from teaching which is perhaps unwise or teaching which is wrong, but it doesn't make the person a heretic in the same way.